Now, whenever I meet somebody at a car show or run into a VinWiki viewer that enjoys the content that we make, one of the first questions that almost always comes up is, do I have any new information about the El Chapo McLaren F1? And since we started to make content about the car late in 2020, there haven't been any groundbreaking updates, nothing that led to us finding the car, unfortunately, but there have been different clues and clarification about elements of the story in the car's past and some theories about where the car might be until about a month ago. And I got some rather alarming news about the current owner of the car and about the car itself. And so I wanted to share that today. But the car in question is McLaren F1 chassis 39. And the car was originally spec'd to go to the CEO and chairman of McLaren, Ron Dennis. It is a Brazilian brown metallic over red car with gold wheels. Unfortunately, even though I think it's a spectacular color combination, his wife hated it and she insisted that he get a silver car instead. And so the car was sold or at least driven by someone in the UK for a short time after it was built. And it was driven around on the license plate P440 CPJ, presumably with a real logbook and everything legitimately registering the car in the UK. Now, shortly after that, the car went to Mexico, and there it was owned by someone named Umberto Ojeda. He was also known as Ricardo Beltran, also known as El Robashivas, also known as the Goat Thief. And he was one of the most prolific drug runners for El Chapo. And there were rumors, or at least court testimony, that said that he was responsible for trafficking over $100 million worth of cocaine per month. Now, he would have gotten the car late in 1996 or early in 1997. And I actually spoke to a guy whose brother worked at an airport in Texas when the car was flown in there. He helped unload it, drove it around the taxiway, and helped to load it on the truck that would eventually take it down into western Mexico in Sinaloa near a town called Culiacan. Now, unfortunately, not long after he got the car, Ojeda was killed. This would have been in 1997, and he was driving around in another one of his vehicles, a Jeep Grand Cherokee that was both armored and supposedly gold-plated. He was driving around with his son when he was shot. He was shot with one bullet, but his vehicle was shot with more than 200 bullets, supposedly, in an attack that was orchestrated by El Mayo, who would later take over a large portion of the Sinaloa cartel. So the shot that ended up killing him actually went in through the lock cylinder in the driver's door, bounced off of the steering wheel, and hit him. Now, it didn't kill him immediately, and his son, who was either in the passenger seat or hiding in the floorboard at that point, needed to get home to safety, and supposedly, Ojeda was able to drive back to his house, get his son to safety, and he passed away there. Now, there's a lot of rumors about what happened to the car immediately following his death, but the most interesting of them is that he had not told anyone in the car tell or in his family where the keys and the paperwork for the car were. And so there were inquiries made to the McLaren factory to replace the keys. And the quote given for a new set of keys to this car was $200,000 to $250,000. Now at the time, the road cars were not selling well new. They certainly were not selling well secondhand. You know, two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars is what it took to buy a whole car. So to quote that much money for just a key, didn't really mean that the keys were that expensive. It probably reflected that they didn't really want to get involved or that they didn't really have a paper trail. They couldn't justify who the owner was, whatever the case may be. The family or whoever was in charge of the car chose not to order a new key and nobody really saw much of the car for the years following. Now in the mid 2000s, the plate P440 CPJ, which there's a replica of it in the set here that Shmi brought me when he came down to visit and tell some stories and explain to me a bit about what this might have meant. That plate showed up on a different McLaren F1. Chassis 06R, one of the F1 GTR race cars, the Herod livery car. And it was being driven by David Clark, who was involved with McLaren Corporate, very involved with their racing, and he was driving a race car around on the street. Now, there were various race cars that got driven on the street, and they were legalized in a variety of different, some legitimate and some not so legitimate ways. This was before the days of Lanzante road conversions for all sorts of race cars. But the car was being driven with a logbook and with that plate, but the logbook and the plate still went back to the VIN for chassis 39 the Mexico car. Now, David would have known that this car was for a short time registered in the UK and no longer was, and so he could sort of replace the logbook, and while I'm not accusing anybody of doing anything illegal, 
it seems like that car just assumed the identity of the other car. And so since there's no visible VINs on the GTR, he put turn signals and headlights in and everything and made sure that it was legal enough to pass MOT and he was able to drive the car on the street. Now we also learned that not long before we started to release content about 039, 06R was sold to James Hunt of the Tax the Rich 100 collection. Now, even though a lot of that collection was sold off last year, they do still own this car. And shortly after that transaction, the car was seen at Lanzante getting a road conversion, which was peculiar because the car had been street legal or at least been driven on the street for about 15 years at that point. And so obviously what happened was it went to somebody who wanted a true legally road converted car. And when it emerged from Lanzante, it wore a different number plate. Now, none of that really helped to explain what had happened to chassis 039. And of all the people that contacted me with different information about the car, about who might have it, all my attempts to contact the family, I actually spoke to a lawyer that had represented the family in a civil forfeiture suit in Miami. I talked to people that alerted me that they had seen my content, that they had talked about it. They even talked about potentially trying to lure me to Mexico to steal my money or kill me, but I'm glad that they haven't done that. I'm still sitting right here. But there was one guy who contacted me about a year ago that probably had the highest degree of confidence in what he was telling me, albeit without photographic proof, because no one has been able to provide for me a picture of this car. I've talked to people who said they saw it at a quinceanera party early in 2020, in a barn late in 2020, and people who have seen it at parties, driven around and things like that, but nobody has any proof. And there, there were a couple of pictures that were definitely Photoshopped that popped up, and it was pretty easy to tell that they were Photoshopped. But this guy, and I'm gonna be deliberately vague about who he is and what he does, not at all because it's illegal, but just to protect him and his contacts within the cartel. But he is an American business owner who was contracted by members of the cartel to come to Mexico and do some work for them. They would take him by private jet from Texas into Mexico and then by vehicle to the compound where he would perform the work. And at times in this journey, he'd be blindfolded. Certainly he was not allowed to take a cell phone or anything like that. And so one time while he was down there, he was driven around by a member of the cartel and they were going somewhere in a village and he saw on the street this car with his own eyes, he claimed. And he knew what it was because he had seen our videos. And he told the guy that was driving around, hey, is that the El Chapo McLaren F1? And the guy said, yes. There was another member of the cartel that drives the car around. We see it all the time. He said the car was in very rough condition, but it clearly ran. It was in some public parking area. And he said, well, is there any way I can get some pictures of this to send to Ed? And the guy said, no, not right now, but maybe one day. He continued to ask after he got back home, he called me and said, hey, Ed, I, I found the car. I saw the car in person. It is still in Sinaloa. I said, this is amazing. How do we get pictures? How do we get in touch with somebody that I can at least ask, can I buy the car? Because if there's any car on earth that I want to call Premier Financial Services and ask for a seven figure loan to buy, it is a derelict, terrible, scary history McLaren F1. It is the dream and I don't know, maybe one day, maybe that's why I've had a now a six year sponsorship relationship with them, sending so many of you to do good business with them and why I sent so many people to use their services while I was at the dealership. No, they're, they're a great company, we love them, but they will be my first call if I ever get in touch with somebody who will sell me this car. And he was never able to get something, but a month ago he called and he said, Ed, I got some terrible news. The owner of the car was out driving or flexing in the car, he said, and someone took offense to that or they just wanted the car that badly and they shot him. Unclear if he was shot with the car or actually in the car, but these non-cartel assailants both killed him and took the car, and he heard that it had been removed from the country either to Panama or Colombia. Now, presumably, this was Ojeda's son being assassinated in this car, either just because it was being carjacked or because of a cartel complaint. This was also around the time when El Chapo's son was arrested, and that caused massive violence between the cartel and the police force of Sinaloa, you know, tremendous casualties on both sides, generally warfare at that, you know, the first quarter of this year down in Mexico. And so unfortunately, it sounds like whoever was driving the car, presumably Ojeda's son has been killed and the car has been removed by someone who actually wants it. Now, that being said, 
it's got to be a very, very difficult car, both to own and certainly to operate, to drive around in Central and South America right now. It's a well-known car from a well-known former owner and a former owner before that. And so if the people who are in control of the car still watch my videos, I appreciate that. I also appreciate you not killing me, but if you would like to trade, I know a lot of people in your profession don't necessarily want money, but how about another interesting car? I've got a variety of awesome Lamborghini Murcielagos that I love very dearly, but not as much as I would love to have your McLaren F1. I've got Missy Elliott Spiker. I've got a friend with a McLaren P1 that had a really bad day, but he doesn't exactly know what he's gonna do with it. Perhaps we could do a little horse trading there. Whatever you need, I might even know of a interesting history Koenigsegg that I may or may not be trying to buy at the moment. So if you wanna trade something for that, that would be amazing, but at the moment, at least, it appears that we have reached the end of the road for the El Chapo McLaren F1. Now, if they do call, I'm probably still gonna need a gigantic loan, and my next call will be to Premier Financial Services. As I said, this is their sixth year of sponsoring the VinWiki channel, and we love them for that, but we also love them because their simple lease is really the most powerful tool in the world of exotic car financing. Whether it's a 50, 60, $70,000 car, or a seven-figure McLaren F1 with a really, really strange history, they are my go-to people. They give you all the advantages of a lease, like a low payment, and the ability to have certain tax benefits, but also the benefits of a traditional finance arrangement. You can build up equity, you can pay it off at any time, move in and out of other cars, and you'll always know where you stand thanks to their amortization table. So check them out now with the link in the description below to thank them for their support of VinWiki and find out how easy they can make it to own your dream car.